Hi, I'm Joey Lott, and in today's video, I'd like to respond to an email that I received with a few questions in it. So let me just read that email to you. It says, I was hoping you could talk about letting go of the body and the struggle to do this because of the fear of death and also the resistance to let go of the mind or an agenda due to the fear of going crazy. Now, this is a person who has uh, exchanged emails with me for uh, some time, I think a number of years. And so uh, the uh, I can, I'm making some assumptions that um, the wording here about letting go of the body is not intended as a um, to get rid of the body or to transcend the body or dissociate from the body or any of that sort of stuff that's often, um, well, it's, it's quite popular to want to do that, and understandably, but, <clears throat> you know, because sometimes the body is very uncomfortable. Um, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's not what's intended here, so I just want to clarify that. Uh, what I understand, uh, and I could be mistaken, but I, I think what I understand from this is um, the, 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 that sometimes there's a there's a a, a contraction of, of attention of in fact almost all the time of, of the self protective mechanism trying to protect the body trying to stay safe which is perfectly natural if there's a threat and appropriate and and useful so there's no problem with that we don't need to get rid of that entirely but um, that can also be very painful and uncomfortable and um, in my view, I mean, my experience is that that's a, a lot of suffering is generated by this chronic state of contraction of trying to protect yourself, however you identify. So I'll actually address both of these questions at the same time, might as well, because um, also says the same uh, is, the second question is about the resistance uh, to letting go of the mind or an agenda. And uh, same thing here. So there's there's a sense of self, a sense of identification with uh, with something, right? I mean, there's a identification with the body, identification with the mind, whatever the case may be. And again, it's perfectly appropriate and natural, and there's nothing that needs to be gotten rid of there. But um, I think we can all relate to this. At least certainly I can. That there's there's this, as I've already described, there's a tension this self-protective mechanism. So there's an identification with something and then there's a desire to protect. And when that protection is not needed, which it's not most of the time, if you look at your life, 99% of your life does not require, I, I'm making an assumption there. I mean, there, there are certainly times in which this is not uh, true. I mean, if you're living in a war zone, it's different. But for most of us, most of the time, 99% of our lives, just don't require that protection, right? I mean, if you're just honest and you tell the truth, it doesn't really require that. But we certainly can come up with a lot of, of stories about it, about how we need to protect, how we need to contract, how we need to tense up, how we need to try to solve the problems. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've told a lot of my stories about uh, this sort of thing. And it seems appropriate in this context, so I'll just I'll bring it up again. Uh, I used to have this recurring experience. It was pretty much on a nightly basis. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would lie awake for hours uh, with just in terror. I mean, just um, frozen in terror. I mean, I just felt as though the the shoe was about to drop. You know, the other shoe was about to drop, and um, uh, uh, my my mind invented all these stories about w what the problem must be and then tried to solve that problem or those problems that it came up with. And the recurring theme for me, for m most of my life, um, and I could speculate as to why this is, but it's really irrelevant. I mean, it's just the theme of a lot of my personal um, concerns has been a, a, a fear of being poisoned or contaminated or uh, harmed in some similar fashion. And so the the way that would manifest it would be I'd, I'd wake up in a panic and for, for hours my mind would race 
uh, and I, I would be thinking, well, m it must be that the neighbors, downstairs neighbors, upstairs neighbors, neighbors are all around me. They're all smoking methamphetamines and crack cocaine. Just, just the way that it went. And it didn't matter where I lived. <laughs> you know, I mean, I had lots of different neighbors, lived in lots of different places, but this was always the case. You know, if I was, if I was in a hotel, this was the case. Even if I was visiting... Uh, if I was visiting with my parents, and it didn't, it didn't matter. There was always this this basic concern. Um, if it wasn't crack cocaine and methamphetamines, it was the you know at my parents' house. They have a, a standalone house. I would be concerned that the neighbors were out spraying insecticides. And just to clarify, I mean this, this may not seem like a problem to you because uh, first of all, it it, it it I mean it wasn't, but it sure seemed like it. Um, but uh, the reason that my mind was spinning with these these stories was that um, it was just scrambling to come up with some kind of explanation and a way to protect myself. So, but the trouble was I could never really solve those problems because I could never actually find the actual cause. You know, I never could. I never caught the neighbor in the act of smoking methamphetamines, and then the, uh, I could never prove that the smoke from 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 that was somehow magically transported through my walls and that it was actually causing me harm but you see this is just how how minds work they try to solve the problem and so um so i would lie there and i and i this went on for years and it was horrible it was just nightmarish i mean i would uh go on for hours and then finally usually around dawn I would be so exhausted I'd finally fall asleep for a few hours <clears throat> and so the um, the the problem that I, I started to discover I just started it just, I mean it's it's obvious really if you take a look is that there's that focus on the the thought and the focus on the thought is because there's this hope that somehow that focus is going to be the salvation and it's you have to look at well what is it going to save me from the hope is it's going to save me from the unwanted experiences that i'm having so in my case i was terrified i didn't like that experience i wanted to get rid of it so my mind was trying to find a solution to that. Well, first it had to create the problem. You see, I mean, the the pro the, the experience itself is not actually the problem. I, I mean, not in my experience, at least. It seems like it. It can seem like it. I understand that. But what I found was that the um, that that feeling of terror was not the problem. But my I was conditioned to believe that it was a problem, and I believed that unquestioningly. And so I immediately jumped to, well, how do I how do I identify the problem? Uh, I, I rather, how do I identify the source of this problem? So there's the feeling which is interpreted as a problem. Then I have to find out what's causing it, and then I have to solve that. And so that my mind would be racing trying to figure this out. Must be the neighbor smoking crack cocaine um, and then trying to solve that but of course I couldn't solve it so this is the the puzzle this is the problem that we this is how we get ourselves bound up um, is that we try to solve a problem that we've we've misunderstood to begin with and then it, it's in, it completely insoluble first of all because it doesn't exist as we've imagined it and second of all because the the actual nature of um, the solution that we propose is almost always impossible to actually solve if you take a look at your own experience in this. So th this person had specifically said the um, fear of letting go of the mind due to the fear of going crazy. Um, th that was n never quite my experience, but if, um, I can understand that. I mean, I, that may be other, other person, another person's experience. But I would say that if you look at what's underneath crazy, 
um, or any other word we could substitute there, whatever it is that we're afraid, we, th we whatever we're, we think we're afraid of, that the more, <clears throat> the more significant thing is that we're trying to get rid of the fear. I mean, just take a look at that. It's certainly been my experience. So just look right now to see if this is true. Whatever the the seeming object of your fear is, see that it, if you really look, does it actually matter what the object of that fear is? I mean, it, it matters if there is a real object. Like uh, if somebody is coming at you with a knife, then you, it makes sense to have a fear of that person with the knife, but in most of these, uh, these, you know, ninety-nine percent of the problems in our lives are not like that. It's it's uh, we're trying to get rid of a feeling, and if you look, on the the what we're concerned with usually is that there's a fear. And then we say, well, now I need to understand what the, ca what the cause of this fear is. So it's like me lying in bed trying to identify why, why do I have this fear? Why do I have this terror? Why am I feeling this? And then I invent the source of that. It must be the neighbor smoking crack cocaine. So in the same way that, you know, the crack cocaine is the same as the going crazy or death or whatever, we could fill in the blank there, the object of the fear. I'm saying it doesn't really matter. It's, it's sort of a distraction to be concerned with what's the object of the fear. Just take a look and see what you're actually trying to do is get rid of the fear. You don't really care how or why. You just want to get rid of the fear. You want to feel better. You want to feel the way that you want to feel. So um, I, I think, and you know, this is uh, somewhat speculative because I'm not every person, but I have my experience, I speak with enough people that I have some degree of confidence um, that what I'm saying is, is true. At least it's a useful guide. So take a look for yourself and see when you are afraid to let go of the mind, so to speak, when you're afraid to let go of the thoughts uh, or the, the, the agenda, as this person wrote, or the, it's a fixation, there's a tension there, it's like grasping. So if you're afraid to let go of that, see that what it is that it, you're you're uh, uh, actually afraid of the the fear itself you're trying to get rid of the fear and you're afraid that by letting go or softening that fixation and just allowing the mind to do whatever it does without paying any particular attention to it without trying to solve this problem that you're just going to be stuck with this fear forever or the or we could just even make it even um less specific and use fewer specific words and just say that there's some whatever this experience is that's unwanted your concern is that by letting go of that fixation that you'll be stuck with this experience that you don't want which makes it sound a little bit uh less terrifying than it actually is i mean it's a big deal i mean i i understand because i like i said i would lie there awake every night in, in just absolute terror. I mean, it was just like paralyzed with this terror. So I, I didn't want to let go because I had this concern. If I let go, then I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be stuck with this terror. And this terror is a problem. I was convinced. But after years of this, I finally realized uh, this isn't working. So what if just as an experiment, I'm going to see what happens if I let go. And um, there's no way to have the reassurance. You know, we want to have that uh, uh, the, the assurance that if we let go, all will be okay. And it just not doesn't seem to be available. I mean, it's nice to have somebody who can offer you some degree of faith, as I hope to do. Somebody who can say, look, I've been there. I know. I understand. I can describe to you the experience, I can relate to this, and you can have trust in me through that. Um, and I can say, if you let go, it's you will discover that it's not what you thought. And I, I assure you that's true, but the problem is, you have 
no way to get the security that you want through my reassurance. I can reassure you until the end of time, and it won't give you what you need in order to have the security that you want. I mean, I mean I'm remind, this is a long video, but I'm reminded of when I was a kid, I used to go to the, um, the YMCA pool with my dad sometimes, and I don't remember how old I was, but it, not too old, and I wanted to jump off the high dive, so I had to do the swim test to prove that I could swim the length of the pool, and then they said, okay, you can now you can jump off the high dive. So I went, climbed up the ladder to the high dive, and I walk out to the end of it, and I look down, and I said, oh, shit. <laughs> and, um, and I think my dad was down there, and, and he said, you know, it's going to be fine. Just, you know, if you want, you can just, just jump. It'll be okay. And I said, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no. I stood there for a long time trying, trying to work up the courage to do it. And I, I had all the reassurance, you know, the lifeguard was there. My dad was there. He said, it's going to be okay. I'd seen people jumping off of it. Never seen anybody die. So I had a lot of reassurance, but I didn't have the security that I wanted. The absolute security, the, the the sense of it's definitely going to be okay. There's no risk involved. But that's, that's not available. Life seems to be risk, and there's there's no way around that. And so um, the point here is that that there is absolutely a risk. You have to risk. You know, this person were uh, fear of going crazy, so you have to risk going crazy. You have to risk dying you have to risk fill in the blank whatever it is that you whatever however you have objectified that fear you have to be willing to risk that and uh, but uh, the good news is unlike the high dive where it's it's really an all or nothing proposition i mean it's always an all or nothing proposition but it's a the high dive is a is a you know, at, at that particular pool, there was just one diving board. I say high dive. I mean, it wasn't that high. It wasn't like, you know, Olympic uh, diving boards. But it, it was a, it was a, it was a, a diving board nonetheless, and it was high. It was high up for me. And um, so, but that was it. You know, it was you climb up the ladder and you walk out and you dive off of it, and that was what was available. But the good news is, in our actual inquiry into our own experience, we can grade that. What I mean by that is we can take a gradual approach. We don't have to go climb up this ladder to the singular diving board and jump or not. We can, we can, in, in our, you know, the, the, uh, the, 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 the to, to extend that metaphor, it would be like having a, a diving board that's just a foot off of the pool and then having another one that's two feet off the, the pool and then three feet and then four feet and five feet and uh, you have this ability in your actual inquiry into your own experience to metaphorically you just get on the one foot diving board and jump off of that so it is an all or nothing thing but it's not as it doesn't have to be as terrifying because a lot of people say to me uh, you know, I'm having this crisis, now what do I do? And I say, well, you know, if you're having a crisis and you're not prepared for that, if you haven't practiced, it's like climbing up to the 100-foot diving board and you haven't, you haven't, you haven't even done the one-foot diving board. It's, it's possible, of course. Anybody can actually jump. But um, at any moment, it's always possible, even in the midst of a crisis, it's absolutely possible, no question about it, to, to let go. But how likely is that? It's, it's less likely if you haven't jumped off the one-foot diving board and then the two-foot diving board and then the three-foot diving board. So I, I always recommend that you put it into practice with the small stuff. You just see with the small stuff, can I let this go? Like right now, as you're watching this video, it's a long video, so you must be interested in what I'm sharing. Take a look right now. In your experience right now, it, hopefully this isn't a big crisis. Maybe it is. Even if it is, still still give it a, a go. But um, uh, particularly if there's not a huge crisis going on right now, particularly, in fact, if the, the more at ease you are, the better in this case. 
just take a look and see where is there still holding on? Where are you still trying to protect yourself in your actual experience? Just look in your actual experience. Where is there still this grasping? It's a physical experience. There's a physical grasping. It may be subtle. I should, maybe I should say it's material or it's, it's phenomenal. That's a phenomenal grasping, a phenomenal tension. Uh, but you just see that there is a, there's an actual grasping. It's not just a metaphor. There's an actual phenomenon of grasping, clenching, tensing, armoring. Just look to see where that is. Maybe it's in your feet. Maybe it's in your hands. Maybe it's in the center of your head. Maybe it's in your eyes. Maybe it's in your abdomen. Wherever it is, however it is, you don't have, even have to conceptualize it, but just explore your direct experience and see where that is and see if it's possible just to let go a little bit. And you see, it's, it's an all or nothing proposition. I don't mean you have to let, it's all the tension or none of the tension, but I mean this letting go, it, 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 you have to let go, either, either grasping or letting go. The letting go may be a big letting go, Grasping may be a big grasping, but but between letting go and grasping, there's a it's either or. So just let go, just for a half a second. And as far as I know, this is the only way. There may be other ways. It's the only one I know of. In which to discover your inherent freedom is just to actually take a look right now, not in theory, not in the future I'm going to do it, not uh, some other time when I'm feeling better or worse or when it's more appropriate and when I'm whatever. Just don't make any excuses for it, just right now. Right now, be willing just to take a look, how am I grasping and let go? And then continue to let go because there will be objections saying I'm not doing it right I don't understand I'm not there yet I'm not feeling the way I think I should feel if I was letting go I'd be enlightened oh yada 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 so you just continue to take a look and let go and all of that stuff continues there's no end to it because in my experience at least is that there's no there's no end to the letting go there's no end to the falling it's like the dive where there's no end. There's just sometimes more grasping. So let me make sure I have addressed all of this. It says, uh, letting go of the body and the struggle to do this because of the fear of death and also the resistance to letting go of the mind. I think I've addressed both of those, hopefully. Uh, it, hopefully you understand that. I mean, that uh, I feel that I've addressed them. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. And uh, as always, if you've enjoyed this video and you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. If you're watching it on Facebook, please like my page and uh, share this page with other people you know who may enjoy these videos as well. And also, uh, wherever you're watching this video, if you haven't done so already, please visit my website. It's joeylot.com. And there you can sign up for whatever free offer I have available as you're watching this. As I'm recording this, I have a free ebook called Lose All the Way. Uh, as I say, it's free. It's yours for the taking. Just sign up and get it. Uh, also, one last note, if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to address in other videos, send me an email to joeylott at gmail.com. That's J-O-E-Y-L-O-T-T at gmail.com. That's the best way to get in touch with me. Please don't leave comments asking questions to me because I don't usually see the comments. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.